Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining the second webinar on the SSA Reservoir Engineering Technical Section. Uh, we started last week with uh, Petrol Reservoir Engineering Extension Suite, and we covered material balance and the EOR screening. And today we will focus on analytical module and rate transcend analysis and decline curve analysis. My name is Sam Aderemi, and I'll be presenting with my colleague, Glimi Ogwidi. So the agenda for the presentation, we're going to start by giving the overview of production interpretation, the greenfield application, the brownfield application, then we will explore the diagnostic uh, plots, both uh, PTA, that is pressure transit analysis and rate transit analysis, and we'll dive more into rate transit analysis, whereby we use the concept of the rate transit analysis to identify the flow regimes. And from the flow regimes, we're able to recalibrate our model prior to moving into production forecasting. And the production forecasting, we could actually use the calibrated analytical module that we've built. Uh, alternatively, we could use the client of analysis. That means that we take the production data that we've got and, and we can just use regression module to extend the production data and use it to forecast for the period that we want. This is based on the assumption that there is no change in the operating condition of the system. And lastly, we will uh, run you through live demo. Okay, like I said, last week we discussed material balance COR screening tool. So today our focus is to cover another three uh, technologies or workflows within the production interpretation environment. And all these uh, technologies that we're talking about, they are actually to assist a reservoir engineer to perform classical reservoir engineering task. So now you can quickly solve the uh, challenges that are related to maybe greenfield or brownfield as the case may be. So the goal for uh, Storm BJ is to make petrol reservoir engineering indeed a reservoir engineering application and let the engineer be able to get the benefit, the full benefit of the spectrum of the technologies that we've lumped together. So in the past, like we, many people believe that Petre uh is for a pre and post processing for the dynamic simulation. But we know that that is now changing. It is really a reservoir engineering toolbox. So you can take advantage of what you've got within Petre Reservoir Engineering to actually do a lot of uh, reservoir engineering tasks that you used to do in different applications. So we're putting everything together within this environment so that you are not just using Petri as a as a tool for uh, just to do pre and post processing of your dynamic simulation, but you're actually using it to do your uh, routine reservoir engineering task. And one in interesting thing that we must mention here, since this workflow, they are all Petri centric. Uh, you, you have access to enormous data that you can actually integrate together this vast and diverse range of data that you've got. You can integrate them together to really gain deeper insights into your, into your module or into your analysis. And that is the goal we've got with uh, Petri Array. So, and these are different um, uh, technologies that I'm talking about before. So this slide, I actually present the landscape of the reservoir engineering functionality that the that Petre Ari offers. So um, I will take you through them one by one. But I'm just going to give the overview. Uh, at the end of the day, we'll focus on the RTA, analytical module, and DCA, those three in the middle. Uh, last week we already covered this part. Okay. So, but looking at OFM uh, data connector. This actually helps to bring the historical production and injection data from OFM into Petre. So what that means is you've already got OFM as your data repository for your production data, your wet test data. They are all sitting in your OFM. So the benefit of this uh, module is when you launch it, 
you are able to select .ofm uh, file, and that gives you access to all the variables that you've got in OFM. Then depending on which one is required for your uh, study that you want to do in Petra, then you can just drop, drag it in. Another one is the bubble, uh, uh, production bubble mapping. And this is really good because it gives you the overview of what is going on in each well in the entire reservoir with respect to your production. So you can see, okay, at this time, where is the water coming from into this well? Is it coming from the north or from the south, as the case may be? So it gives you that picture uh, on the regional level, and it's really a very good to, to play with your production data and really understand what is going on at every point in time. Another one is the uh, production mapping, that is the grid. And on the basis of your production, this gives like a regional view again. So similar to the bubble um, uh, of the production behavior in different parts of the field. So it can be used to identify good and poor producing areas in your field. So when you interpolate those uh, production figures in each world together, then you can see where is the poor uh, production coming from and so on and so forth. Another very useful tool is the split manager. So what the split manager does is actually to back allocate your production or injection streams into maybe um, your completions or any flow units. So if you have at the well level, if you have the production at the well level, then you can back allocate back to the completions. So it's more like a back allocation tool. And that is also sitting there for you to explore. And the good thing, like we mentioned last week, is you are not paying any more for this because as long as you have the Petri Ari, then you have the uh, plugin installed. It comes with it automatically. You just have to, you, it, it doesn't attract any extra charge, you know. Another one is the flow correlation data matching. And it assists to match the simulated pressure, temperature with the observed pressure and temperature data from different work and help it to match the flow correlation actually. So it optimizes the flow correlation for your wells. And the flow correlation that you are uh, matching, they are actually the same correlations that we've got in uh, pipes in. The multi-phase vertical flow correlation, the horizontal flow correlation is basically the same. So it's like things that you need to, you used to do in different applications before. Everything is coming together for you now in a single environment to really take advantage of this data that is sitting within the project. So it eliminates you creating different projects because you've already got all the data together and you can take advantage and use that. And that is key benefit and that integration as well helps you to ensure consistency across all the data that you've got. We also have the VFP table generator. So that uses the same flow correlation to help you to generate the VFP table. Um, the same flow correlations that we have in, I mean, in pipes. So, and it also supports the generation of gas lift ESP as the case may be. We also have the node analysis and in the node analysis, you can run your node analysis now directly from Petra. And we have the RTA, rate transit analysis. So with the rate transit analysis, which is uh, the main focus today, and that module actually supports most of the industry use diagnostic uh, charts, uh, AGAMA, RNI, and so on and so forth, which we will cover. And the interpretation of the derivative uh, uh, plots the slope of the derivative plot helps to estimate, you know, the reservoir and the well parameters of interest that you may want. So the main focus will be to interpret the flow regimes and from there uh, you will be able to update your model as needed. And that is the key area that we will focus on today. Another one is the decline curve analysis. You have got your production data. So all you want to do is take the production data as long as the assumption is uh, there is no going to be any change in the operating condition, then you've got so many uh, 
uh, model and pre cool models that you can use to actually see what the trend will look like in the future. Then we've got the uh, type well, which is actually helping to compare the performance of each well with the rest of the world. So you can easily, so it's using uh, some statistical properties to really compare each well in your field and see how the well is doing. Whether a particular well or set of wells are performing or underperforming, then you can recommend them for a uh, walkover as, as, as needed. So going to the production interpretation uh, that is available in Petre, that is the module that we're focusing on. And that assists in interpreting the rate pressure data, you know, to obtain key reservoir, key well parameters, okay? So, and it has got a lot of the industry standard interpretation tools. And it also provides a quick analytical streamlined workflow that can help to actually evaluate different production scenarios, performance, and you can interpret your production data as needed. You can identify the productivity uh, problems um, that you might be having with different wells in your model. You can also do a kind of optimization, maybe of the completion, if you are doing stimulation, you can easily assess those fractures. For instance, at the design phase of the fracture, you are, you are saying that the production from the fracture that you are generating from your stimulation treatment, you can predict them very easily. And of course, the results can now be used to pick what is the optimal um, treatment, I would say, like given the total propant that you've got for a particular well, this is the amount of the propant, this is the amount of the um, hydraulic fracturing fluid that I'm going to inject. So what is the number of the fractures that I should actually create the, uh, the cl cluster of the fracture that I should create? Should we go for the option like having more uh, fractures but shorter, or should we do fewer but longer? All this you can quickly test, and from there you can make a decision on which one is optimal for you. So and key uh, topics today is the rate transcend uh, analysis. And the rate transcend analysis actually is designed for low frequency sporadic production data. That means that your regular production data is what you are using, you are consuming when you are running this analysis. Uh, unlike the PTA analysis where you might have to go and get very high frequency data before you can uh, really run the PT analysis, the pressure transfer analysis. So, and the workflow, because it's fast, it's analytical, you can make all kinds of prediction in the context of maybe multi-well. Uh, it's not limited to a single well. You can do multi-well, you can do multi-layer. So it's very suitable for quick uh, look of production assessment in your field. And the applications, um, cross across both green field uh, assessment and the brown field uh, evaluation. So if you if you have any question, please put on the uh, chat window, but if it is really necessary for you to stop me, stop me and I will, I will be more than happy to pick your question. So for the green field, what we mean by that is a field under the initial development. So the production data is not available or very limited at the time of the analysis. So uh, we have the analytical, um, since it's analytical module, you can actually, like I said before, use it for uh, to make a best uh, quick decision about maybe the configuration of the design or the most suitable, maybe wide location, or you can synthesize your uh, model properties, such as the layer properties, and so on and so forth. So these are all, what is the optimal spacing that you have? And when you come to the brownfield uh, application, you, you've got a whole lot of um, uh, values that you can derive from here. So you can calibrate the model, the analytical model, and based on the calibration that you've done, you can now feed that back into your numerical simulation and you can do your reservoir characterization very quickly. So you have the idea of what is the drainage area, what is the permeability. You have the idea of if you are dealing with a um, hydraulically stimulated uh, well, 
for in a in a non-conventional environment, then you can easily estimate what should be the average fraction length that it should have. So all these can be used together under the brown field. Another one with the brown field is the decline curve analysis that we already mentioned. And so what this slide shows is to map the petrol processes to the corresponding workflow. We have something like data processing. In the data processing, you are trying to get rid of outliers. You are trying to get clean up your data because we're talking about sporadic data. And sporadic data that you measure could have some noises sometimes. So you can do a cleanup at this point. You, if you also have a THP, uh, that's from the word, because the analysis requires that you have BHP a diversity equation that we're using. We need to get the BHP. So we can do BHP computation from THP as long as we calculate the VFP uh, to describe the flow behavior in the world. So another one is the diagnostic plots, which is a very useful tool to at least understand before you go deep into the analysis. You can do the PTA diagnostic plots. You can do the RFTA diagnostic plots. Model. So you are represented. You now have to define your case. The case is to add the time. Hello? So the case is to add the time and the control to the to the to the module that you have built, then you are able to use that for like a green field development scenarios predictions. Another one is uh, if you look at the RTA, which is actually um, the 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 when you are really looking at calibrating your module, then you try to interpret your flow regimes, and from there you understand your module better and adjust the parameters of the module. Then before you move on to the production forecasting. Uh, we have in between here what I call the nonlinear regression, and this is actually using optimizer to do the regression, the calibration of the module. So instead of uh, doing the uh, manual calibration from the flow regimes uh, interpretation, you can actually set up the parameters that you want and use that to uh, let the the algorithm, the optimization algorithm, to help you to to minimize the mismatch that you want, and that can speed up the process as well. Then we also have the prediction. So looking at this, this is the workflow that we want to cover now. So we will move on to the greenfield uh, production assessment, okay? And in the greenfield production assessment, I just want to bring back uh, to you that the flow of single phase slightly compressible fluid in porous media which we know that is governed by the pressure diff uh, diffusion equation, or what we call the diffusivity equation, and which is derived from the mass conservation law and the Darcy's law. And it takes uh, the form of the 3D Cartesian coordinate system that we see here. This equation is uh, the backbone of uh, the fluid flow in porous media, right? And the condition for solving this equation is that you have to provide the initial condition and you have to provide the boundary conditions. So this is the same equation that we've got in the numerical model as well as the uh, analytical model. So in terms of the boundary conditions, the inner boundary condition, usually the outer boundary condition is no flow boundary condition, but the inner boundary condition, which could be um, whereby you specify the pressure at the well, then or um, the constant pressure at the boundary due to the large aquifer or gas cap. So you specify pressure, then the rate is being calculated. Or if you're using the Newman condition, you specify the rate, okay? And the pressure will be uh, calculated accordingly. So this is the key equation that we use in both analytical model and uh, numerical model. But the difference is that, uh, here we're using a simplified uh, module. We are using a simplified module. What I mean by a simplified module is, instead of having the heterogeneous uh, permeability field that we use in numerical simulation, for instance, uh, uh, instead of having that spatial um, uh, orientation of the uh, properties, the variation, the heterogeneity that exists in the, in the module, here we are relying more on a single uh, 
a single permeability number for a, a layer cake model, right? Even though the mathematics is robust, is strong, is the same mathematics, you're, it's never going to be the same kind of detail, heterogeneity that we capture in the numerical simulation. So it's just uh, a very good, uh, uh, a quick, a fast, uh, easy to set up uh, module. So in general, analytical methods actually provide um, what we can say the exact solution, but to a simplified problems, as we know. Why the numerical method is an approximate solution to the exact problem. So the question is, which of these ones should we use for our model? So there is no straightforward answer to say, oh, is the analytical solution that you should adopt or the numerical simulation. So it all depends on uh, many factors. For instance, it depends on how much data you've got in the first instance. I mean, there is no point if you don't have the data to embark on, um, I mean, you can embark on numerical simulation, but if you don't have in, uh, enough data, especially at the early stage of the, uh, of the field, you might want to with the analytical model. It also depends on how much time you've got for this study, right? And it depends on how much budget you have, because you may not have budget to run all the numerical simulation. And more importantly, it depends also on the objective of the study. What is it that you're trying to get out of the study? For instance, if you are, if you are going to be uh, making a decision on where to really place the world, then I don't think that is a candidate for analytical model. So at the end of the day, no one method is uh, like, oh, this is the only one you should use. You should use everything together. We just need to choose a fit for purpose approach, taking into the consideration all the factors that I already mentioned to you. So the production interpretation support different reservoir model types. For instance, uh, whether you have single layer, multi layer, single tank, whether there is uh, gas disruption going on, homogeneous reservoir, um, depletion drive, um, uh, unconventional model, you can do all that under the module. And also, the boundary condition uh, is no flow assumption. That's the external boundary condition. And in terms of the well that you are dealing with here, um, you've got access to all kinds of well, vertical well, multi well, so it doesn't have to be a single well. You can do all the wells in your module and just represent them and do all the tests that you want to do, horizontal well, deviated well. And in terms of the fluid module, you've got the um, all these options, including the multi phase uh, flow, which you can use the Perry method, and phase rates for uh, multi phases that you've got and you try to combine them together with this method in order to get a single um, equivalent rate that you can use. Since the assumption of the uh, differential, I mean, the diffusivity equation is we have a single phase. So you also have the production control uh, that you need to set. Maybe you set a rate target with the BHP limit or BHP target or the combination of both. So all these options are available for you. And when it comes to the analytical reservoir uh, module that we've been talking about, uh, the first part of the workflow is to gather the data. It could be those wells that you already have in your Petra project, or you are creating new wells from scratch in the analytical model process. And if you are going to have the multi-phase, it requires that you also have the relative permeability, which you probably might have, you might have already in your module, or you might create another one from micro offices. The same thing goes to the fluid. At the end of the day, you define the property of the module and you build your module. So once you have your module uh, built, the next thing is to do the case from there. So you go to the case, create the case. Uh, we're going to do a live demo for you so that you see exactly what we're talking about. So from the case now, you define your production strategy and you request that this is how long I want to produce from. And on that basis, um, it's something that actually looks like this. Um, if you look at this, what we are looking at now is, is a new project. We're bringing in the fluid model. And now that you brought in the fluid model, you want to create a, an analytical model. And that is the first step. So you're selecting the fluid phase that you have that is oil. 
you are specifying the initial condition, the datum depth, the pressure at the datum. So all these are required, right, for both numerical and analytical model. So once you finish with that, you go to the well. You can either bring in existing well from your petrol project or create another one. And you can create the vertical, the horizontal one. Here, what we're doing is we're entering the well there. And once you are done with the well, the well is defined. And if you are bringing in an, from the existing project, they are also there. Then you create the perforation if you are creating a new one within the analytical um, uh, model uh, here. So once you create one already, uh, the next thing is you define top. This is the perforation, top and bottom, the diameter of the O. And once you set up the diameter of the O, if you're going to have hydraulic fracture, the object is there, you put it. The next thing is to define your grid. Again, you can drop in your grid or you can actually um, just generate one or specify as the case may be. And notice that this type is being calculated automatically for you. And what it's doing for there is actually to um, use the reservoir geometry, the saturation and the fluid uh, property to calculate the type at that point. Now we are defining the case, uh, the start and the end. That is the start and that's the end you just enter. And you take your control type. And once you take your control type, the next thing is specify the limits because you're controlling with BHP. So you specify your BHP limit and just say, OK, you need to save the project. That's basically what it's trying to do there. So once you save the project, then you run it. It's analytical module, so it runs pretty in few seconds. It runs and you can see your result and you can make your decision as the case may be. So that is it running there and it has finished. And you can see your receipt. So we'll move on to the brownfield, which is the last part of my presentation from you. So it starts with the data preparation. So in the data preparation, you need the production data. The production data can be from, uh, maybe from your OFM. So you can use the OFM data connector to bring in the data, or you can bring in the dot board data. So you also have access to the studio search. So what that does is to filter the words of interest that you want on the basis of the production KPIs. Maybe you want to see high water producer wells or producing wells or gas producing wells. So you can use the studio to filter down to the wells of interest that you want to work on. Then the next thing is um, you want to do data reduction. Um, data reduction helps to, for two reasons. You are doing that actually for two reasons. The first one is the performance uh, of the RT analysis, because we consider every point that we add to the analysis or to the calculation. The second reason is to get rid of the outliers that you may have, since all these are from sporadic data that we're working with. Once you have that, if you don't have BHP measure, maybe there is no down gauges, you, but you have THP, then you have to generate VFP, put everything together under data preparation and move on to the production diagnostics. In the production diagnostics, you can look at your pressure transit plots, rate transit plots. The next is to create the analytical module, just the same way you've seen in the green field. But this time around, you're going to control it with the observed data that you've got. That's the only difference. And that helps you to see the disparity that may exist between the simulated results and the uh, observed data. And once you see that, through the interpretation of the uh, rate transcend analysis, interpretation of the flow regimes, you are able to uh, adjust the properties of the module and calibrate it back. Or you can use the automatic uh, regression. That is optimizer. I will call it assisted uh, approach. Then once you calibrate the module, then the next thing is to think about forecasting. Your forecasting, you can now use the module to forecast or simplistic uh, approach is to use the uh, decline curve analysis. And the, both of them will introduce you to that. So here, what you are looking at is the same thing that I've discussed with you already. Uh, the production diagnostics are available, and that is the process where you can do that. And at the end of the day, you can use the pressure transcend, the rate trans, you can plot it off then. And you can use your simulated result or your observed result. And what it does for you is to give you a quick identification of 
your production behavior or performance. So it gives you that picture, which helps you when you move on to the um, detail analysis. So all these are tools that we really want you to take advantage of because now you've got access to them. So you can say the pressure transit analysis. What it does is if you have multiple events like build up and broaden sections, it will automatically detect that and it will generate the derivative plot and the pressure plot on the log log. You can see the first build up, you can see the second one. So you can also uncheck any one that is not of interest. For instance, here now, looking at this diagnostic plot, I can see that my late time uh, regime is being masked with the early time and the middle time is not seen uh, in this case. So that gives me the understanding of what might be going on in my model. And if I'm doing the ray transcend plot, which is what you see, here, then I also can see the disparity that may exist between uh, my observed data and my actually simulated results. Then I can try to calibrate that and match that. So, and that is what we want to focus on here, actually. So the objective of this section um, that we, the last section, uh, maybe for today, is to get familiar with uh, the rate transcend analysis basis and how to perform it and how to also perform RTA using Petra interface. You also will get understanding of the input data and the output that we get out of this analysis. And they also, you will know how to evaluate the post-job well performance. You will know how to use the RTA to complement our full field numerical simulation model. So this section is actually split into two parts. So the first part will go through the uh, RTA overview, the difference between the RTA, PTA, the, and the flow regimes. So I won't go so much into the detail. I will just give you a very quick overview because that is needed for the demo, for you to appreciate the demo that you're going to see thereafter. Then we look at the applications of the diagnostic uh, plots. Then the second part will focus on the calibration. Once we have identified the flow regimes, then we can now do the calibration of the our analytical module in preparation for the production forecasting. So, but uh, getting back to the basis, right? When we talk about the pressure transcend analysis, which is widely used in a classical reservoir engineering practice, and this is uh, it uh, adopts the uh, it adopts the uh, uh, this high frequency data in order for you to be able to do the analysis, maybe coming from the build-up test or coming from the drawdown test. In the build-up test, the well is short in, the pressure response is uh, monitored, and in the drawdown, you produce at a constant rate and you, you observe or measure the, uh, the pressure. So this we are familiar with. There is no problem about that. What is interesting with this uh, PT analysis, you are dealing with high-frequency pressure data. And the quality of the interpretation definitely can be linked up with the resolution of the pressure gauges that we're using. And the reason being that uh, sometimes at the early stage of the uh, test, you might need to increase, uh, you might need to take your measurement at a milliseconds, but this resolution you can change thereafter, right? Maybe to hourly instead of uh, milliseconds that you were using before. But we all know that uh, when we deal with the unconventional reservoir as well, um, even though the concept is similar, it's uh, the same concept, but the time it takes is different. The test duration may be expected to be longer in the unconventional reservoir because this formation is very tight. So in order to see the right response, that might take some time, okay? So, and there are different types of the pressure measurements uh, um that we have we have the downward pressure gauges and sometimes we could have the uh, e esp pump and below the esp pump we have the sensor the gauge that might be uh, attached to it which helps to measure the this high frequency data that we have we also have the drift stem um, tester or the formation tester all these are sources of the data that we use in this case so like i already said uh, for the unconventional one, uh, the tricky part is um, in my, uh, you might need to stay longer before you can actually see the true response that you need. And that makes it um, really tricky 
and the high frequency transcend data not always available for the unconventional one because sometimes it is uneconomical or uh, operationally it might not just make sense to do that and that is why the rate transcend analysis will become more of interest even though the rate transcend analysis is uh, commonly used for the unconventional you also can use it for the conventional uh, field the good thing about the rate transcend analysis you are just using your regular production data to do the analysis. You don't need the additional uh, uh, test data. And you can characterize your reservoir, the completion effectiveness. And of course, this is widely used, like I mentioned, for the unconventional uh, reservoir. And you can use it to, of course, as input into the history matching. And this is the main difference between both of them. They are both based on the same equation. Of course, the arrangement of the parameters in making the derivative plus and they are kind of different what you are plotting on left and right, but it's the same they, they are a theory that they are both uh, based on. But the frequency of the data are different. Uh, you can also look at the result that you are getting from each of them. PTA is known to give you the well and the reservoir parameters like skin, uh, you can, uh, permeability, uh, the distance to the boundary, and so on and so forth. And you can get quite a lot also uh, from the RTA. Uh, the drainage area for conventional and for the unconventional you can get a whole lot of the properties of the hydraulic fractures uh, from there so uh, the flow regimes that we're talking about the first flow regime talking about the bilinear flow and that is when you have the uh, maybe you have fracture so be in the reservoir between the reservoir into the fracture you have a linear flow and in the fracture to the well you have another linear flow which is perpendicular and that gives you like a bilinear flow. Of course, that sometimes requires that you are very, very careful when you are doing the interpretation. It can be recognized as a positive quarter slope of the derivative plot. And what that means is uh, uh, the quarter slope line move one log cycle vertically for every four log cycles of the horizontal movement. So you can see that, but sometimes if there is damage um, in your world, that could actually um, make it uh, difficult or you can miss it up with a linear flow. So because you're going to use all the interpretation to figure out what is going on in your, in your reservoir. So you can also estimate the fracture conductivity from there, uh, as the case may be. Another flow regime is the linear flow. And there are different scenarios that we can find the linear flow. And now we can recognize the linear flow again as the half slope of the derivative curve, okay? And this is also, linear flow is also quite common. Uh, for instance, it occurs in the channel reservoir, uh, where you can see different scenarios, where you can have a linear flow um, occurring, and that can also help to estimate the fracture related parameters. The radial flow is very, very common, uh, especially if you have a vertical well. But depending on whether the well is, um, partially completed or fully completed would determine how you see the radial flow. Our classical uh, diffusivity equation is derived on the basis of linear flow, as you know. And that is what we recognize as a flat uh, trend in the derivative curve, actually, when you look at it. And it's, it helps a lot with the estimation of permeability and skin uh, factor. So another one is the boundary dominated flow regimes. These are just different regimes. I mean, we can go really into the theory of uh, this, uh, but this is not in this section. We definitely have a training that um, addresses that. But what we're just looking at is to give you a view so that you can see how to apply it when we're doing the um, demo. So the boundary dominated flow is the most important flow regime to identify the characteristics of your boundary, maybe your fault. Okay. So since uh, we're dealing with homogeneous uh, assumption now, we cannot say that from which side is the boundary that we are seeing. That you need a regional data like the seismic data to know, as we all know that. But the good thing with this is you can recognize it as a unit slope in your derivative plot. And you will see when we begin to identify most of this flow regime. And it helps with the estimation of the drainage area. So the last one that I'm going to look at is the stimulated reservoir volume 
in the case of the unconventional reservoir. So, and this, um, we know that the stimulator reservoir volume dominated flow, the, all the influx of the hydrocarbon into the well is happening within what we call that stimulated reservoir volume, which is usually part of the reservoir that is influenced by the hydraulic fracture that we've got. And in terms of the expression, you can see it's actually given by the uh, twice of the half length multiplied uh, by the, um, uh, the length of the fracture area. That is the difference between the first fracture and the last fracture. And that is the, uh, how to calculate the uh, stimulated reservoir volume dominated flow. But most times it appears like, uh, it, like in two uh, flow regime. It's, it has to be that flow, uh, two flow regime, the linear one and the STR dominated flow regimes. So this is what you see when you are making your plots in Petre uh, for your data. You can observe that this is a uh, radial flow. You can see the flat in the derivative. You can see that this is the boundary. And from there, that helps you to adjust your model parameter. This is the original model parameter. But based on your interpretation now, you see the proposed parameter values that is giving you. So if you trust your interpretation, then you can commit that. And once you commit that, it will update the model automatically. And the model will be calibrated and ready for prediction. And here you have the regression part again, I mean, that you can use to speed up the match. You will see all that in the demo. So the last topic for today is the production forecasting, which I'm just going to introduce you to the two options that you've got. After you've done the model calibration, then you have the production forecasting. One, you could use the analytical module that you have calibrated, or you can use the decline curve analysis. If you are using the decline curve analysis, there are a few uh, options, methods that are available. We are all familiar with the apps, exponential, harmonic, hyperbolic, uh, that you can use depending on the uh, forecast uh, trend that you're having. For unconventional one, we've got quite a lot of other modules that you can use as well. And you can see, you can choose the phase that you want to forecast very easily using your production data. And what is the forecast duration? Once you select it, select the module that you want. And that is the um, end of the, the concept that we want to show today. So my colleague, let me, um, let me, let me, can you please unmute yourself? And you can go ahead and share yeah, your screen. Yeah, yeah. yeah, fantastic. So please right, go ahead right, to yeah. share your screen. Okay, please uh, let me know when you can see my screen. I'll take you through a demo on how to use uh, some of the very, very interesting uh, features of petrol production data interpretations. Uh, these features are very uh, interesting and helpful for your day-to-day -day data production analysis. However, uh, this demo is focused on creating analytical models for green and brown fields. I would also show uh, show how these models are calibrated for brown fields using ray transient analysis or non-linear regression where ray transient analysis does not give a good match. And finally, I would also um, show uh, how to do uh, forecast using these models and um, also petrol decline curve analysis future. So the first thing we want to do is actually to, to create your PVT model or to import if you have existing PVT. Uh, so in this case, i am just be importing an existing PVT model. Uh, there are warning signs here uh, because we have not defined initial conditions, but you can ignore because we're going to create a new one. So under the production tab, uh, you open the model, analytical model dialog box. Uh, there are three tabs here, which is the reservoir condition, the wells, and then the grid. Under the reservoir conditions, uh, we define the initial reservoir condition, which is the fluid type, the fluid type and the pressures, uh, the wells, Tab, we will specify uh, the wells, well type, and then the well completions. On the grid, 
tab we're going to specify the grid dimensions uh, and some desaturations and properties so let's start from the reservoir um, conditions uh, we are assuming uh, it's an oil reservoir and then the datum depth uh, let's say 50 70 and then pressure of 4500 and then reservoir temperature of 126 degrees fahrenheit that is done then we move to the well tab if you have existing well in your model you can use the blue arrow here to bring in single well or well folders uh, from your existing project or you can create new wells by clicking on create new well so i can call this well v v uh, v v wells or you can um, bring it can create a vertical well or horizontal well for horizontal well you need to specify your lateral uh, lateral length but for, uh, for this case i'm using a simple vertical well so i specify total uh, well depth let's say 7100 and then 7.8 inches uh, diameter once that is done then I, I will, i'll have a folder created called v well uh, and then if you go to the input pane that folder has also been imported uh, has also been created here which is called v well which differentiates your wells that you've created for vertical well from existing wells if you have that existing uh, so the next thing we want to do is uh, to create the well completions so you click on create perforations you will specify your top and bottom perforation i'll say 7000 to 7100 for my perforations and then i just say okay once that is done you have perforations created then the final tab is the grid tab and the grid tab you have an option to bring in an existing uh, grid by clicking uh, the blue arrow or you populate from the completions we've already just defined so in this case we just populate from existing uh, completions we just created and then you can drop in your pvt model you've already you already have and then you would have an estimate of your volumes here so this is also based on processes you've defined and the saturations so this can be changed and modified but for this green field scenario we could just leave this um, as it is now so once you you can also want to view uh, your well and then your grid in 3d by clicking on the 3d window so it displays the well uh, and then the, the grid uh, in the 3d window for you so once uh, you can see okay now you have a 3d grid created under your model's pane with uh, your process net to gross and your saturations the next thing we want to do is to create a case um, using this grid so you click on analytical case in analytical case you, you drop in your analytical model in the analytical case so i would call this uh, a green a green case a green case a green analytical model case one so because we have not brought in our production data so uh, then i can append i can append a line uh, to specify the start time of uh, my production so i could just say start time of production is 2005 as uh, the case maybe 2005 uh, for for this scenario and then uh, you, you can specify uh, the, the the end time of uh, of 2020 and then uh, you can specify your control mode so you can specify your bhp control or your rate control so i'll just assume rate control and then i'll say 2000 uh, i must mean 2000 mm -hmm. then i specify my bhp limits of 1800 then it's done i can click uh, check to see if it's uh, valid once that is valid i can run the case once I run the case, uh, it displays the results um, on, in the background, uh, showing the uh, the pressures and the the rates. So in this case, I can see uh, you can see here this is the fuel pressure, and then this is the bottom of flame pressure here. Then this is the production rate, 2,000 barrels of oil per day as specified, and then this is cumulative production um, that we have based on that. 
So you can see here that the production rate is pretty very fairly same all through the uh, the duration of production, uh, which shows the uh, possibility of uh, having um, um, of developing overestimated anyway. But uh, we can ignore that for for the greenfield scenario at this point. So um, then that takes us to uh, to creating uh, a case for the brownfield. So for the brownfield, you may need to import um, observe data for the brownfield. Uh, so what you do is uh, you you go to input pane and then import. In the import, you click on you can import uh, from a database like OFM or from a flat file, for example of dot volume, and then you just say uh, open. Then you can specify the well your you're linking this to which is the view well which i called it view well then under the data tab you can specify you can confirm the data you're going to be importing which is the water or gas and bhp so you can just say okay once that is done uh, you have um, observed one in the input pane you may want to just uh, have a quick look uh, at the spreadsheets of what has been imported so under the well, you may want to just look at the well and then see you have your oil, water, gas, uh, and the um, bottom of flow pressure. So this has been uh, this has been imported. So then for a greenfield scenario, what do you typically want to do? You may want to define uh, a new case uh, for uh, for the brownfield. So you you call that. Um, Brown, call a brown, brown, brown case. Then in this case, you would want to drop in the existing production data that you've already brought in here. So you go back to your input pane, and then you drop in your observed data in here. And then once you've done that, you may want to uh, define the range based on what you have in the observed data here by checking, clicking this use observe data uh, time range so once that has been done uh, you may want to uh, to do a quick check if the data has been there uh, is valid based on what has been defined and then you can do a quick run so once the run finishes you should be able to see uh, the production data compared to your model uh, parameters so you could see from here uh, we have uh, a match for the rates, but there's the pressures uh, are not matching. So uh, what do we do next is actually to uh, look at the rate transient analysis uh, to calibrate uh, this model. So you click on the rate uh, RTA, which is the rate transient analysis, and then you specify your model here. Once you specify the model here, uh, it automatically plots the mismatches and the matches uh, in the background. You can see OK. So you may want to look at your derivative plots, uh, looking at the radial flow regime, uh, the case may be, then and the boundary uh, condition. So you, you can click on the radial, and then you may also click on the, the boundary to see. Uh, uh, the, the boundary parameters so uh, you may want to try to align your 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 your, your, your flow regime here more um, to present the actual data uh, by moving the, the the line up and down or you can also shrink the range based on where you feel uh, you have the radial flow regime here so once you, you once you do that, uh, you can um, also do same for the boundary condition condition as well. So as you're doing that, your the permeability is changing, and also your boundary is also a changing. So the ye yellow uh, highlighted area uh, shows that these numbers uh, are different from the numbers we have in the in the model. So uh, we can accept. These numbers to be used in the model by uh, clicking this um, this check buttons. Once you you do that, the numbers become the same for the permeabilities and skin, 
and also same for the reservoir uh, drainage uh, radius so so this would uh, however uh, affect or change uh, the volume that we already have created from the start so now the volume has been changed from about 3 billion to about 330 uh, million um, stock tank barrel then you can run the case to see how closely uh, the the reticle model matches with the production data so you can see like the pressures which weren't matching are matching perfectly very well now uh, similarly the rates are also matching so the model is now very valid for us to use for for reservoir uh, forecasting so for reservoir forecasting uh, if you if we go back to the analytical case uh, for the brownfield case, we can append the second line here uh, to to run to let's say 2020. Uh, so 2020 as the case may be, let's say 2020. Use that. So once we define that, we can also specify uh, the control mode. So we can say rate control. Um, at this point, we can just say we can specify, let's say, about a thousand, um, a three hundred um, hour rate per day, and then we can specify a um, thousand two hundred, a thousand two hundred, or a thousand eight hundred, a thousand eight hundred. Um, PSI and then we can just uh, run so uh, once you run that it um, it runs the history and also runs uh, the focus as well and then the results would then be be plotted in the, the in the background so you, you can see here uh, that the prepared pressures which is the bottom of flowing pressure are matching perfectly well and then similarly you can see that the rates uh, are also um, matching pretty very well similarly even the cumulative pressure is matching also very well now let's just do a quick um, review of the green field case we can copy and paste the green field case um, just to run with the new parameters uh, that has been defined based on the matches that we have for the greenfield scenario so uh, what we can do we can right click on this and just rerun without changing anything however we have updated the permeabilities and also the drainage area so the results would however be different so uh, we have the results plotted here so we can superimpose all the results uh, for observed data and for the green fields to know how they, they closely uh, match. So we look at the brownfield cases and then we look at the observed data scenarios. So you can see from here, uh, even without production, um, having a good estimate of the volume, we can have a very fairly good uh, forecast uh, using the analytical model. So uh, the next uh, part, the next feature uh, I will talk about is the nonlinear regression. So this brings uh, a lot of value uh, in situations, especially when you're not able to have uh, a good match on your, your model uh, using the rate transient analysis. Uh, so because we already have uh, modified an existing model, I'll just reset uh, the model. Uh, first of all, I'll just uh, go in here. I'll create a new model which hasn't been calibrated. So I'll take it back to where it was before at the tree um, here. And then again, I think uh, we also modified uh, the screen factor uh, of our well. So I can also take it back to, let's say, uh, back to what it was zero as it was before. And then I can, uh, we can now create a new case uh, for, for that. And then uh, I'll, I can call it um, 
we can call it the nonlinear regression uh, model NLR for the case there and then um, I can um, drop in the new uncalibrated model which is uh, model 2 here and then um, we can drop in the observed data uh, for that case we can drop in to the and then we can set um, our control um, to it as the case may be then specify the range and then once this is done we can we can run so once once we run this uh, we are able to to see to see um, to have this initial result that we have initially so then uh, we can then go to um, nonlinear regression and then we can specify the analytical case that we are looking at here and then once we drop that in uh, it's going to give us uh, a, a parameters uh, and their ranges uh, for the permeabilities, uh, the model area, the skin factors. So we can select the parameters we want to regress on. We can specify their ranges. And then once uh, we do that, then we can go ahead to regress. So before we regress, uh, it is also good for you to be able to select uh, parameters that you want to or points that you want to regress on so in case you you have the data points that you, you do not um, they are not very um, very accurate so you can ignore those so I'm assuming that all my data points are accurate so I may want to regress on all my data points uh, just in this scenario so I then um, click on regress before then I want to reduce my runtime by reducing the number of iterations. However, the more the number of iterations, the more accurate your model is going to be. I'll just use 20 for this scenario, and then I'll uh, just uh, regress. So while it is uh, running, uh, typically it um, displays uh, a root mean square uh, plot, uh, which would come up shortly. So the root mean square plot will tell you uh, how the results are converging uh, towards uh, the exact solutions or towards the actual uh, uh, data. So, um, so like here, you can see here, this is um, the initial uh, points uh, estimates of the root mean of the root mean square. So at the as the case is running, it's um, it does estimate what the root mean square gives you. It tries to minimize this as uh, much as possible to have uh, results uh, as closely as possible to the observed data. So when this uh, has finished running, uh, we can uh, commit uh, the results. Once we commit the results, that enables uh, the model to be updated with the result that we have from the, item, from the regression analysis. And then we can use the model for, for forecasting um, as we have done uh, for for the rate transient analysis so you can see from here the yellow as uh, has uh, as you can see from here it, uh, shows you that it what we have uh, in terms of um, the numbers in the actual models different from what we have in the in the regression uh, nonlinear regression uh, estimates so we can commit once we commit and then we can we can run so that um, updates our model and then gives us uh, uh, the very good match. So you can see from here that the, the pressure matches are pretty very good now. And then you can also see uh, that the the rates are also uh, pretty very well matched. So so this is uh, what the nonlinear regression uh, brings to the table. Uh, also gives you a good match uh, here. So uh, finally, I'll take us to the last feature uh, about um, how to use uh, decline curve analysis in Petro uh, to achieve a match. So it's pretty very straightforward. So you click on decline curve analysis here. Uh, once you click on that, it displays uh, the ch chatting window here that allows you to select the observer that you want to use for your decline curve analysis. So once selected that, you can 
uh, do that on on the well level uh, as the case may be and then you have lots of features here all the uh, fundamental equations uh, and models exist like the apps equation you can the apps equations is also here you have the two you have all other uh, other ones here then you you have the options uh, to specify uh, the limit the rate limit which you want to stop at let's say you want to say at uh, the minimum you want to have this um, 200 barrels of oil per day uh, you may want to do that and then you want to recalculate to, um, to see what your uh, your DCA would look like, so it's going to calculate and ensure that you you you, you, you don't go um, you don't go below um, at the two two at, at, at two hundred barrels uh, two hundred barrels um, per day, and then again if you have uh, some spurious uh, ad, ad data, you have uh, options to be able to exclude some points from your your data. So you can highlight those areas, uh, points you want to exclude from your data, and then you can uh, do a calculation of your your data, and then you 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 have a pane uh, at the bottom here that gives you the actual numbers uh, of, of 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 your results. So so this comes pretty very um, handy and also very very helpful. Uh, you can vary your your B values. You can change uh, your exponents to be able to give you uh, whatever decline that you want. If it's harmonic, uh, if it's, uh, if it's um, uh, whatever you want to do, if it's exponential and whatever you can specify those numbers, able to give you the decline that you actually do want. Um, thank you very much uh, for, for for listening. End of the presentation. The last slide I want to show is uh, to just show you the next topic that we'll be looking at, which will be first of July, and we look forward to see you there again. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So, uh, any other question for me? I have a question. Yeah. I have a question. Uh, Nelson, please, please go ahead. Yeah. Please, uh, I don't know. Is it possible to use, uh, if you have maybe a static grid or a simulation grid, an existing grid, can you use it for the PT analysis? So, so that, that's one I, question. Sorry. Okay. That's one question. Then I have another one. Sorry, I was not part of. Uh, the material balance uh, training. So, but I just have a question: Is it possible to use uh, PHP data, bottom of pressure data, instead of static pressure? Because there are some field where you have downhole gauges, and it's easy for you to get BHP data every time, or virtually every day. So, but for static pressure, you might need to go and shut in the well for you to get those static pressures. So, I'm saying that instead of doing your material balance with uh, static pressure, can you use bottom hole pressures data? So, um, let me start with the first question that you asked. Using the existing grid in this uh, reservoir engineering extension suite, I think this is the key benefit that we're promoting. And that okay. is why you, you want to use it because you have your grid already. And you know that the model will be more consistent to use the same grid. And that is the benefit, actually. Rather than going into another software to start building another model, the analytical equivalent of what you have, the dynamic one in Petre. And that is so, why Shmidi has decided to put it. So you can use the grid that you have. That will be the answer. Sorry, sorry follow-up question. If you are using the grid that you have, the story that is estimated, is it the story for the full grid or just the story for the drainage area of the well that you're analyzing? So if you remember, like in material balance last week, uh, my colleague showed you the where you can select different regions, I uh, mean, the segments, because to show up, then you can do it. The tank can be based on the segments. And today we also talked about your tank can be based on the uh, layers that you've got in the module. You can actually have different layers, or you could have... Um, but each layer is a tank. That is what you need to understand about this. But let's say we have three different stratigraphic um, uh, beds. So, so the three of them can come up to each layer and you can find the average and calculate. So the in place uh, will be on, uh, then you can get in place for all of them on this basis. So that is number one about the using the grid. 
But the second one that you ask is more into the domain aspect of the subject. Whether you should use the uh, uh, flowing bottom of pressure in the material yeah. balance as against the static pressure. You see, yeah. the material balance is a response that is coming from the average reservoir pressure and yeah. trying to use a uh, flow bottom of flow pressure, which is a pressure around the web ball, which is also affected by the near web ball phenomenon. It will not be really representative. So, of course, yeah, I mean, people can do all kinds of estimation because of what they are. But you have to be aware of the uncertainties that you are introducing if you ever try that, because the concept is built on the average reservoir pressure, which is coming from your short in pressure. But most times, this is not available. If you have RFT data, you could have a way of plotting RFT and you still use it, uh, especially if you take the RFT at different times from different wells. As you drill those wells, you take them, then that can be something to give you the average reservoir pressure. So you just have to find a way if you really want to improve the confidence in your study. But if you just yeah. use what you have, then... I, I, I understand. The reason why I was saying that it's easy to get uh, bottom no, pressure if you have that yeah. gauge. But, yeah. but for pressure. static pressure, you need to be shorting your well and all that. And so most times, you don't get those static pressure easily. Oh, true. So, yeah. So if you are having maybe you have downhole gauge and you get you know bottom pressure, it will it be will the result be so different as in will it be so significantly different? It because depends on the depletion it, 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 that you have. Uh, uh, that's yeah. it. You know, it depends on the depletion you've got between the reservoir and the well bore itself. Yeah. So if the if the if the difference is not much, then yes, it could be a good approximation. But if it's too much, then the result is not really representative anymore. OK, thank you very much. You're welcome. Hi, Sam. Um, there is a question from Teresa Elma. Uh, can we predict the pressure from RTA or any other model to compensate the absence of enough pressure data? I think that is similar to the next question, because the problem is getting pressure data. Uh, two major sources of the average pressure data will be from either shorting test, build up test, or from uh, RFT that we've taken. But we need to take at least a fewer development wells before we can really use it. So, but in the absence of that, yeah, it becomes really tricky. But when it comes to just the RFT analysis, we don't need the average reservoir pressure. We actually need the bottom of flow pressure in this case, because we provide the initial reservoir pressure, then we are just looking at what is happening, uh, the uh, bottom of flow pressure. So even if you don't have bottom of flow pressure, if you have well led pressure, we've said that also before, we can just use VFP to get it back to the uh, to the depth in the in the well that will be representative of the bottom of flow pressure. Nelson, do you have another question? Uh, okay. Have... Yeah? yeah. Go ahead, please. Okay, Mr. Sam, um, thank you for that. I have a question. On the rate and transient um, analysis, uh, I see uh, that is done uh, now in the field where I have uh, more than one well, uh, a multiple or a couple of wells. Yeah. You know, I have a feeling that um, if you do this um, rate transient analysis for each of these well, you may have um, different um, results. And um, because each will go to try to estimate um, parameters of the reservoir that um, these wells are producing from. So, I mean, in a situation where uh, each of these um, rate transient analyses from these wells, you have them, then you are stuck with the problem of um, what is right. I don't know whether you got my question. Yeah. So, are you talking about uh, superposition? That may exist. Yes, I think yes, that may exist exactly. That's right. Yeah. The interference that may exist between the uh, the worlds. So, so correct, correct. Yeah. All those yeah. things you know put together. You see now. What, does the rate of uh, okay? Yeah. Yes. You see what we've got is I think I I get your question. 
you say RTA is actually plotted against the superposition um, uh, time. Um, only that we've not, uh, in this section, we couldn't go through the theory. That will, uh, will, will have really shed light on what is going on. Because we have um, a three-day course on this topic that we just looked at in one and a half hours today. So uh, we need to get back to the physics and see what the, what the software is doing. That, that will really help a lot to see how that is being managed within the software because all the equations are the, the superposition, trying to capture all the overall pressure drop effects uh, that is happening at a single point as a result of the um, other wells that are present or that are causing the pressure uh, disturbance within the reservoir. But I get your question. Yes, we, we in spite of that, okay. the analysis would be more representative if there is no interference and everything. Because any other thing is an approximation. It's just like when you do deconvolution. Okay. In doing convolution to you, instead of having a constant rate, you are taking different rates, but you are finding almost like the average rate and use that. So in web test, most of these things will go back, but it's always good to go through the theory. So definitely I can I can take another section of theory so that it becomes really clearer how we are handling it. Okay, fine. That's fine. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Very good. Uh, I think uh, very fruitful discussion. Uh, we are really appreciate both uh, all of your your guys' time, our customers in in, in Sub-Saharan Africa. We also appreciate Samuel's time. Uh, the plan was one hour, but a very fruitful and uh, interesting discussion. So. Uh, we 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 pass over the and uh, we will be sharing with with all of you uh, upon request the material and some videos and also the recording. So we will also uh, try to make uh, step by step videos on the workflows that uh, have been presented. And again, uh, please, I think uh, uh, most of us uh, you have you have your our email addresses: Henu, uh, myself, Samuel, Limi, and the team. Uh, so please uh, feel free to reach out uh, to us directly or via your account manager and we can we can take uh, uh, more detailed uh, discussion with you all uh, offline so we appreciate your time again what you see in the screen is the the agenda for the following session so next week uh, july 1st um, or maybe we can check if there's no public holiday we can, uh, we are planning to uh, to launch uh, the third uh, part of re suite which is mainly geo screening. Uh, Henu uh, will uh, will lead that uh, uh, topic, so please feel free to attend uh, that one as well. As soon as we send the invite, and please share with your with your team members, uh, and let us know. Uh, we might be sending you a survey, so let us know if you have any feedback or uh, uh, improvement or uh, suggestions for these uh, uh, technology uh, sessions. We know that we uh, we we'll, we would love to do it with you physically in your offices, but uh, due to the various reasons uh, lockdown and uh, security and safety issues we we uh, we have no option but do it uh, remotely but again we yeah. we we appreciate your time uh, uh, we appreciate your uh, input and again uh, feel free to reach out and we look forward to seeing you uh, next week right so please uh, stay safe whenever you are and have a good day